Hi, this is Fred from Obedia, and today we're going to take a look at the beginning of a Cubase 4 project and touch on some important organizational concepts, things that you need to think about before you start uh, recording. So let's start by booting up Cubase. Now the first thing we're going to do is go up to File and create a new project. You're offered a list of possible templates here, but I'm just going to start with the empty one. Now, this first step is very important. What Cubase is asking you to do is set your project folder. Now, this computer has a lot of hard drives on it, but um, what you don't want to do if you can avoid it is create projects on your desktop or on your local system drive. You want to use either a secondary drive in your computer or an external Firewire or USB drive. I've got a drive in here that I use for all my uh, Cubase projects, and it's this drive here. So I'm going to highlight that and then click on the Create button. And I'm going to just call this My Song. Now this folder is going to be for this project and this project only, and it's important that you create a new project folder for every single new project that you create. So after creating it and naming it, you'll see it's still highlighted. And now I'm going to click OK, and that's going to tell Cubase that this project is going to live in this folder. Now to get started, I'm just going to create a mono audio track right here. I'm going to record enable it and then just record a little bit of me talking. Check. One, two, three. First thing I'm going to do is actually save this project. And when you click on the Save button, you're going to see that we're actually now inside the folder that we created before, the My Song folder. So let's have a look at that folder in Windows. It's on this drive, and here's the folder My Song. So in here, we've got the Cubase document itself, and over here, we've got the audio that we just recorded. One other organizational factor that I wanted to point out is that if you don't name the audio track in Cubase, it's just going to be called whatever it's called when you create the track. In this case, it's just Audio 1. It's a good idea to actually name the tracks before you start recording. That way, the file name will correspond. For instance, now that I've named that, if I record a bit more, check one, two, three, we'll see that the audio clip is actually named the same thing as the track. Let's have a look at that. So here again, we've got our folder our Cubase document. We're going to look in our audio folder, and now I've actually got files that are named what they really are. This is especially important when uh, your projects get really big, and should disaster ever strike, you've at least got a fighting chance of relocating the files should they go missing. So I'll record just a little more here. Check one, two, three. And then I'm going to save it again. This time I'm going to name it My Song 02. Saving your projects with incremental names like this is helpful as you move forward in your projects. Should anything go wrong in a later version, you can always revert back to these earlier versions. Let's have one last look at the folder in Windows. And we'll now see that we've got two Cubase documents in here My Song 01 and My Song 02 and some more vocal recordings. Now the reason it's really important to have each project you do in its own folder is that it makes it what we call portable, meaning that if you want to back up the data for this particular project, it stays a manageable size. You can burn it as data onto a CD or DVD, or another hard drive in your system, or even an external hard drive. Remember, staying organized is 
extremely important when working with digital audio workstations such as Cubase. And as you create more and more projects and your projects grow, uh, you'll be really glad you followed these tips. Thanks for watching. Media, training, technology.